In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Well, happy Easter, brothers and sisters. Happy Easter. Today we, uh, we continue our, our Easter celebration. We're, we're finishing uh, what we call the octave of Easter. And, and we as believers in the Lord Jesus, we as Catholics, We don't just celebrate one day of Easter. We celebrate eight days, not eight days in a row, but it's it's the eight-day day. It's the octave of Easter. And so today uh, culminates that octave of Easter. And in Holy Mother Church, we celebrate today what is what is known as Divine Mercy Sunday. Pope John Paul II in the year 2000 uh, asked uh, every church in the world to celebrate on the Sunday following Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday. And we have 
the beautiful image of divine mercy, which hangs just uh, right behind our, our choir here at St. Francis, St. Maximilian. And uh, we'll hear a little bit more about divine mercy in, in my homily. But we just come and we know the Lord's goodness. We know his mercy and we know his love. He has risen from the dead for us. And so we come here to the altar of God. And let us call to mind our sins. And so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, in my, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. <clears throat> For us, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And the earth Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very reoccurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Fill our minds that we may hear your wisdom. 
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him, even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where their disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when Jesus had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside 
and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Lord Jesus, we desire your mercy. Bathe us in your blood this day. May we be called your brothers and sisters, your sons and daughters, your children. In your name we pray, amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Three things on my heart as, uh, as I've been praying uh, in preparation for, uh, for Divine Mercy Sunday, this, this glorious feast day that, that Holy Mother Church now celebrates uh, universally throughout the world. Those three things are uh, first impressions, a vision of hell, and Krakow, Poland. First impressions, a vision of hell, and Krakow. Um, so we, all, we so often in the Times hear uh, how important it is for us to make first impressions. Uh, you know, how, how first impressions mean everything. You know, perhaps, you know, a, uh, a guy taking a girl out on their first date, that first impression sets the stage, or, or that guy meeting uh, meeting his future wife's father for the first time, that, that first impression meets everything, you know, a, a good handshake. Um, perhaps it's, you know, that, the first impression of a job interview. And so today in the gospel, we get the realization, we, we get this, uh, this, this, great, this great glimpse of Jesus' first impression that he gives to his apostles after the resurrection. So this gospel takes place on Easter Sunday, shortly thereafter, right after, uh, right after uh, Mary Magdalene's at the tomb, uh, Jesus tells her, tell my disciples, tell the apostles to meet me in Galilee. So they run there. And so this takes place on that very evening, the first day of the week, that very first thing, Easter Sunday. This is the first impression. And so what does Jesus do as soon as he gets with his apostles in the upper room? What does he do? The very first thing, he talks about sin. He says to them, peace be with you, to calm their hearts, calm, it, eh? calm their hearts, I'm with you. Whoever sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whoever sins you retain are retained. The very first thing, one of the very first things that Jesus does to his bride, the church, is he talks to them about sin. And this is Easter Sunday. This is the day of the resurrection. He comes to them, and, and as fearful as they are, 
He doesn't talk to them about the resurrection and and calm their fears or talk to them just about what they had seen in the crucifixion. No, he speaks to them about sin. And then our blessed Lord gives them the means in which that he desires to have sins forgiven here on earth. He institutes the sacrament of holy confession, reconciliation, the sacrament of penance. He gives them the means. And so, brothers and sisters, don't let anyone tell you that Holy Mother Church has in, in, invented the sacraments. They're scriptural. Here in the, in, the, in the sacred gospel, we hear Jesus giving us holy confession. Whoever sins you retain, Peter, John, Thomas, Andrew, whoever sins you retain are retained, and whoever sins you forgive are forgiven. And so then the priesthood is given down through, through these apostles. But why is it, why is it, Why does Jesus, at the very first moment after the resurrection, speak to his apostles about sin? Why? And so let's ponder that. Let's ponder that question. Why is it that Jesus wants to speak to his apostles immediately about sin right after the resurrection? The vision of hell. Dante Dante Alighieri um, wrote perhaps and even had visions of, uh, of heaven, purgatory, and hell. And he's most famous for his book that he wrote and his visions of hell. He's known by his first name, Dante. And so we've heard of that, perhaps even Dante's Inferno. It's a magnificent uh, read and, and just a, truly a, a great spiritual uh, book to enter into. But so Dante... Can't go great into the, into the detail, but Dante journeys through heaven, purgatory, and hell. And so he's journeying through hell. And so when Dante, with his companions, when he gets to the center of hell, he sees Satan. He has this, this meeting with Satan, and Satan has three heads. And in the mouths of each of these three heads are three different people. In the first, it's Brutus. In the second, it's Cassius. And in the third, it's Judas Iscariot. Now, each of these three men, um, they were there and they betrayed their friends, their close friends. Brutus and Cassius betrayed Julius Caesar. Cassius was, uh, if we know that story, Cassius was the, was the main instigator. And then Brutus was the culprit who carried out the plot to execute uh, Julius Caesar. They, and, and Caesar was, was their friend, and especially Cassius was really, really close with Julius Caesar. And then in the third mouth, it's, it's Judas, who of course betrays his close friend, our blessed Savior, Jesus. And so they're all depe- depicted in the mouths of Satan, in these three heads, and their backs, and their backs are completely skinned. And so Dante has this vision. He sees them in the mouth of Satan with their flesh torn away on their backs. And so through all of eternity, they are ground in the mouths of Satan in these three heads. And so now when Dante sees this vision, when he has this vision of hell there in the center of hell, he exclaims at the top of his voice, Now I understand sin. Now I get it. Now I can comprehend what sin is. And so remember, remember the question that we're pondering right now. This question of why did Jesus on Easter Sunday, when he first appears to his apostles, why does our blessed Savior speak to them about sin? Remember that question. And so this vision of hell um, is going to be part of the answer. And so when Dante sees these three ground up for all of eternity, excluded from the loving embrace of our good father, excluded from all of eternity, being ground in the mouth of Satan, he cries out, now I understand sin. Now I understand. And so this is the understanding that God wants us to come to on our very own, my brothers and sisters. He wants us to come to this realization that as Catholics, as believers, 
in our, in our beloved Lord Jesus, as followers of him, that when we talk about sin, we're not just talking about a list of things that we have to follow, do's and don'ts, do's and don'ts of, of our faith, do's and don'ts uh, that, that, our, that our church has given us, do's and don'ts that, that God sets forward, things that we're supposed to do and things that we're not supposed to do. We don't follow a set of principles as Catholics. We follow a person, a person who went to the cross for us, who died for you and for me out of love. And so when we talk about sin, we're not just talking about, talking about a list of things, as if, as if our God, our, our loving Father, has, has better things to do, doesn't have anything better to do than just to put check marks next to our name when we fall into sin. That's not what our God does, and that's not who our Father is. But sin, sin is a betrayal of our friendship with Jesus. Sin is a betrayal of the one who went to the cross for us, of the one who laid down his life for us. When we exclude Jesus in some aspect of our life, when we're cruel to others, even when we lose our patience with our loved ones locked in a quarantine home, when we forget about him, when we choose something else on Sunday and instead of coming to Holy Mass, instead of watching Holy Mass on, on, uh, on TV streamed live now, when we, when we turn our backs on him, it's a betrayal of friendship. And that's sin. And that's what our Father wants us to know. And so now, just to take this a step further, this, this image, just to take this and go further with it, with who our blessed Savior is and what he's done for us, what did Jesus see on Holy Saturday? What did he see? And so on Good Friday, he goes to the cross for us. He dies. On Easter Sunday, he rises from the dead, and, and he appears to his apostles there in that upper room where, where, where he speaks to them, where he gives them the sacrament of holy confession. But what did Jesus see in, the, in between there? What did Jesus see on, on Holy Saturday? And so our holy sacred tradition tells us that Jesus descended into hell, and we profess that in the creed. Jesus descended into hell, and so my brothers and sisters, we have to experience in our own hearts that sin offends and wounds the heart of Jesus. When Jesus descended into hell, when he descended into the dead, he went there to proclaim the gospel, the good news. And in order to know the good news, we have to know the bad news of what sin is. In order for the good news to make sense, we have to know what the bad news of sin is. And so when Jesus goes to hell, he saw his sons and daughters created in his image and likeness. He saw his brothers and sisters created to spend eternity in his father's embrace, in his father's kingdom, in his father's home. He sees them suffering. He sees them excluded from God's kingdom. He sees them excluded from the father. And so now we begin to understand why it was one of the very first things that comes out of our Savior's mouth when he rises from the dead. He says to his apostles, whoever sins you forgive are forgiven them. The first things out of his mouth about sin are because he just came from hell and he witnessed what sin does and where sin leads us and where sin destroys the human heart and drives that wedge between us and God. And so Jesus is shouting to his apostles, stop betraying my friendship. Come back to my loving embrace as my friends. Come to my mercy. Come to my love. Come and be bathed in my precious blood. And so now what does this have to do with Krakow, Poland? And so Jesus, who is so good, who is so merciful, never forgets his friends, never forgets his mercy. He appears when? Hundreds and hundreds of years ago? No, he appears in the 1930s to a little Polish nun in, just outside of Krakow, Poland, named Sister Faustina Kowalska. I'm Polish, I can pronounce that well. 
So he appears to Sister Faustina Kowalska, and Jesus speaks to her of his mercy. Why? It's because we in the 20th century and again in the 21st century have forgotten his mercy. We've forgotten how good he is and what he's done for us. And so we've, we've, we've gone away from his mercy. We've begun to, begun to depend solely on our own intellect, begun to depend on our own talents, that we're the creator of our own cosmos. We've taken God out of the picture. And Jesus has said that he wants to enact a time of his mercy so that it can be known throughout the whole world. And he asked for four very specific things to be done. He reminds us of his covenant with us, that bathed in his blood that we become sharers in divine life with him, that we're friends with him for all eternity. And so he asked for four things to be done with, with St. Faustina. He asked first that this feast day, the Sunday following Easter, would be celebrated as a celebration of his mercy, Divine Mercy Sunday. Secondly, he asked that the chaplet of Divine Mercy to be prayed regularly, and he taught her how to pray it. And Mike and Chris in our choir, we, uh, we, we posted it on our Facebook pages and, and go and pray it. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful chaplet. Third, he asked his image that we saw at the beginning of Mass that hangs over here in both of our churches, we have the image. He asked that this image be hung in every church throughout the world so that we could pray and we could meditate on his mercy. And lastly, Jesus asked that the 3 p.m. hour be recognized as the time that he died on the cross. And so I have my alarm on my phone set every day at 3 p.m. and it just buzzes. And I just make a silent prayer, recognizing Jesus' time of his mercy. All of these are tangible reminders of Jesus' mercy. And so as friends of Jesus, let us fall down on our knees today. Let's just fall on our knees today and thank him for his mercy. Because he has destroyed sin. He has destroyed death. Jesus went down to the netherworld. He went to the dead. He went to hell and he conquered it. He destroyed it. Sin has no mastery over us in the powerful name of Jesus. The devil has no power, power over us in the powerful name of Jesus because he has destroyed it. And so let us give great thanks for our Savior who is merciful, who is good, and who is love. Let us stand now and proclaim our faith as one. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting that our Father will hear and answer our prayers, let us go to him now in the name of Jesus, his Son. We pray for the church that we may be transfigured in God's image and shine the light of Christ to the whole world 
through our works of mercy and charity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country and her leaders, that they may be blessed with wisdom, humility, and goodness as they lead the people they serve, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the couples attending the, retri the Retrovi program during the next two months, that they will be open to healing and be able to renew their marriage, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For all the sick in mind, body, or spirit, especially Ken Durst, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Darlene Maliski, that they may have eternal life, and for those who have lost a loved one, that they may be comforted in their grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We offer this Mass for all the people of God, especially Sherry Shore. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray together in silence. Offering to God the needs that we hold deep in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for ourselves and our families during these difficult and trying times that we may have a clarity of mind and heart and patience with our loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious, loving, and merciful Father, we thank you for all of the many gifts that you have given to us, especially the gift of your Son, Jesus. We thank you, Father, for the gift of your mercy. We ask you to hear all of these prayers that we ask in Jesus' name, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and on those you have brought to new birth that, renewed by the confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord, put on this day above all to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And the heavenly powers with the angelic host, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being in paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and all things we be, may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to renew with birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them the forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock 
of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven. To you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, to command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son and may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, Faustina, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Heal us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you, my brothers and sisters. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Oh. 
my brothers and sisters, now opportunity for us to make our spiritual communion. And so just repeat after me, and the words are on the screen for us. My Jesus, my I, believe I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already here. And unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our redemption of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and our hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, just a very uh, happy Easter to all of you. I know that it's a, uh, an Easter that we'll never forget. <laughs> uh, hopefully uh, it's an Easter uh, that'll never uh, take place again uh, quite just like this. But uh, just know that, uh, that we've been uh, praying for, for all of you, our, our pastoral team, and uh, Especially Father Chris and I, we're remembering to pray for everyone at our 9 o'clock hour, 12 noon, 3 p.m., hour of mercy, 3 p.m., and then uh, 6 p.m. And so, so continue just to, to raise up our, our parish communities and, and to pray for each other as we're united as a family. Um, I know that th these, are, these are tough times, and 
tensions are raising. We all need a haircut. <laughs> we all, uh, uh, I've, I've determined I'm not going to trim my beard until we're back together in, uh, in, uh, in church again. And I'm trying to get Father Chris to buy in to grow his beard out and call it a quarantine beard, but he's not, he's not buying into it yet. But, uh, but uh, let's continue just to raise each other up and just to pray for, uh, for this to end quickly and, and for the safety of all. And, and a special thanks to Father Art for, uh, for your continued presence here with our community. Uh, we love you and we're just thankful for, for your continued presence, brother. You. Bow your heads in, uh, and pray for God's blessing and respond with a resounding amen to the following invocations. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate with gladness the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.